So we went back to our little islands again. Ishigaki, here I come. Shakushima, oh yes, don't we know? Uh, there was nothing much there. We we shot down a few Japanese, uh, and then we had a few kamikazes. Well, that was not very nice. Kamikazes, when when you're on deck with a full deck load of aircraft, all fully armed and full of fuel, long-range tanks, of course, and you're turning into wind, and the kamikazes, this is when they want to catch the carriers with a full deck load to fly off. We were doing a deck range there. And um, we, could, we couldn't we could hear, because with the engines all running, see, it makes quite a noise, and nobody speaks to you on the radio. Uh, uh, when you're turning off into wind, you get hand signals about flying off. But you could see what's going on because suddenly there were bloody back forth from the sky, you know, those anti aircraft devices. And I looked across and I saw Indom being hit. Well, Indom was only about six cables away. And I was in Vic. And I thought, well, you know, and when you're strapped in, I was right on the outside end. Ship, ship was turning hard over and uh, to port. And so you know, the, the whole aircraft leans. No, it was going to, it was going to starboard, that's right. So I looked down there and there was the sea straight underneath me and these kamikazes. And of course if they'd hit a deck range we'd have all been written off. It'd have been a monstrous explosion. It's not very nice. But fortunately we weren't hit at that moment. So I was being the leader, I was the first off. I was very pleased to be the first off. Get <laughs> the other side to catch me up. But we got away with it. And when I got away, they'd hit Victorious. She was hit three times uh, by kamikazes. When we got back to Manus, or was it... Um, no, it was Leyte, I think it was. Um, we were at anchor, and, and, and uh, I saw two or three gentlemen in civil, civilian clothes walking on the flight deck. So I went up, because normal naval courtesy, I said, I used to say, excuse me, can I help you gentlemen? Is there anybody you'd like to meet or, uh, you know, sort of thing? Why, yes, says the guy. He says, we're looking for the, 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 the CV that's been kamikaze, you see. And I said, well, you're standing right on one right here. Oh, gee, they, they really were astonished. So I said, well, like St. Thomas, I said, <laughs> come, come, I will let you put your hand in the hole. <laughs> but it's been covered up a bit, so I led them up to where we'd lost a dozen chaps in the port forward turret, where they'd been the first one had hit, and the scars on the deck where the kamikaze he'd bounced on the second time, and the third one, I can't remember. And I said, well, there, that's all temporary sheeting. That put that turret out of action. And we had this all welded up. I got a picture of it somewhere in my thing, of the welding. And I said, oh, geez. And, uh, of course, you know, Formidable got hit, blew a hole, and she was out of action for, I think, four hours before they'd repaired everything, swept all the debris over the side, and was steaming again. Of course, they'd lost a lot of aeroplanes as well. But uh, the ship was steamworthy. Uh, so the chaps have to be amazed. It was the one trump card that we had over the Yanks who got all the brains, all the intelligence, all the modus operandi uh, and the brains, you know, and, and the knowledge of how to do it. But there's one thing they lacked. They had tin, they had wood decks on top of tin. So every time a kamikaze hit, it was right down below and they were all held far. And they were reduced, their carrier strength was very much reduced. By this, so we're very glad to have the goddamn limes for a change.